morning boys and girls well I had a subscriber ask me a question of how I process my deer meat well this week I went out with the crossbow and shot a uh, nice buck and uh, I've got it on YouTube or will have it on uh, YouTube the whole hunt and the Instagram there's a picture on there of it already so you might want to check that out but anyway uh, I'm not gonna cut up the whole deer and skin it and all that stuff there's plenty of videos out there for that and but I did want to show him and, and you folks how to uh, I got a hind quarter here. I'm gonna I got partially cut up already, so I'll just show you the principle of how to do it and uh, debone it, and then separate it up into pieces and uh, how I, how I actually uh, do what I do with my deer meat. And most of the time, I can a lot of it. I do make jerky and lots of other things in different ways and slice it and fry it and and all kinds of things like that. But in uh, different spices at different times and things. But that's all up to personal preference of what you want to do there. But I kind of wanted to get the process of what I do to, just to can it uh, so folks could preserve their meat a little better and, and uh, have things for the future instead of it being in a freezer and getting freezer burnt and things like that. So this is a pretty simple process of how to do it. And it makes it easier to cut it up because you just chunk it up into cubes and stuff like that. So I'll show you that video here and hopefully this uh, helps one subscriber that uh, wants some information on it and uh, make make everybody a little more aware of uh, the process of what goes into doing the deer and other type game and animals and stuff that they uh, you know go out and shoot and have have for hunting seasons things like that so we'll get this going here and I'll show you what I do okay as you see here the first thing you do this deer comes you know it's all together like this you find the hock bone here and there here's the, the the other hind quarter hooks onto here when you've done cutting it off. But you look for this bone, you know, and you can see right here, there's a separation of here. You slice this down through here, out this T bone on both sides, and then you cut around the bone just like this and get this free. And then when you get to here, you can cut around this bone and cut under here and get this all loose. Okay, once you get this off of this bone, you can take this bone completely out of here once you get around it here like this and take that out now the scraps and stuff like this that you've missed if you don't get it all you can you can cut that off and still use it good in the jars and cans because this meat you're not going to waste it so you will keep this just lay it aside in a pan and then you break this down further cut through here You separate all these pieces of meat with this white uh, fatty tissue in here and all this stuff you, you, you will remove all this fat and the, this this stuff here all the fatty tissue the veins any of this stuff you get down this is your round steak right here you get down to this chunk you clean this all off but what you do you start to cute after you get it cut down you take all the meat out you start cubing this into chunks okay once you get that done it goes into your jars from that point on but the main thing with your meat is make sure it's clean none of this fatty tissues on here this I call it streffin I don't know what the actual t technical name of it is but this kind of stuff you take it away you can keep the little pieces of meat and put in your jars but uh, it's pretty simple you know you get in here you cut all this loose like this you get your flank meat right here. This is your round, top or uh, top round, bottom round. You get all this cut apart, and you've got separate pieces of meat. Then, see how it comes apart here. And then you slice this into chunks, and that's what you can. Or you can slice this in thin slices, freeze it, uh, make cut real thin pieces, make jerky. A lot of different things you can do with it. Well, guys, there's what it looks like once you get the meat all off of it and get it cleaned up pretty well. You have very little meat left there, and you can use those bones for other things, too, if you want to cut them and use them for soup bones and stuff like that and boil them. A lot of people eat the marrow out of them, but uh, I'm going to show you what you do with the meat after you get it all off of there. We're going to process it here, and I'll get it into 
manageable pieces here and then we'll show you how we slice it and cut it up to put get it ready to put it in the jars okay folks this is the piece that I just cut off of here you just slice this like that and then I have to cut it this way but I've cleaned these just like I showed you see the little two little cubes you cut up and uh, you just put them in the jar uh, I call this piece the flank steaks. I don't know what you technically call it. This is the round, I know, and different things, but there's butcher names for all these things. But uh, So, you know, don't everybody correct me over what I'm calling this stuff. This is what I've called for 40 years, and uh, I don't get real technical. I, the main name I call it is good when it's done, you know, and so let's, uh, you know, we'll get, I'll show you here what you do. You just take these pieces and just chop them into cubes. It makes it so easy to can is what I like about it. And if you see any of this, this white stuff and this streffing stuff, I call it. I don't know what they do call it, but that kind of stuff, it just, I don't know, it makes your meat taste bad. And uh, If you're making hamburger and stuff, you can take these chunks here and just grind it up, I'm sure. I've done that before and, and add sausage and different things or uh, uh, pork and get to get your fat content and stuff back. But I've always found the deer fat and stuff is kind of not, it's just not that good of meat or good of fat tasting wise. It seems to mess up the taste of your meat. So the cleaner you can get it as far as you've got nice red chunks of meat like that. And you can slice this here into thin pieces and cook it in a skillet, uh, whatever you want to do with it. It's just like uh, beef, you know, it does the same thing. So uh, then we just keep putting in these jars. I've got one here packed. You can see how I packed it clear to the top. You got to get it down below the uh, rim here, and then you clean that rim off good, put your seasonings in, and you're ready to put the jar lids on and can that one. So we'll get back to it here when I get her all canned up and get ready to put it in the canner. Just wanted to show you one thing here, folks. You can take a piece off of this that's you know, it's not very wide, but that's that's a heck of a steak to fry if you wanted to cook it in the skillet or out on a campfire or something. But you can cut these whatever thickness you desire or like and you cut them almost through like this and they call that what they call that a butterfly steak so you see how much bigger of a steak you get there if you wanted to fry it put it on a grill or something down to campfire or in your skillet or whatever just wanted to show you that but anyway we'll get on with the process here we got some chunks cut up we're going to fill these jars up and we'll get back to you in a little bit well, I'm getting it cut up here, uh, so we're getting down there to the end of it, but here's some of the scraps that you get off your meat and stuff that I've cut off of the pieces that I didn't want to put in my jars, but you can grind this into hamburger and stuff. You don't waste it, so just save that and use it for other things. If it's good and clean and all that, no bones or nothing in it, you're good to go, but we're getting there. Okay, boys and girls, here's what I've got. I done took 10 pints and canned them before this. And so we got five more pints here. We got 12 half pints. I don't know how much that is, but you can figure it up. And I still got a little bit in there, and I ate some for supper the other evening. So that's what we get out of one deer. Uh, then we got the stew bones and other things, and some little bit to grind up for hamburger left. Most deers, seven to nine quarts, you'll get out of them. This was extremely big deer. So this is probably the most I've ever got out of a deer over the years. Uh, all, ten, all, all the other 10 pints aren't here, but uh, it's a whole lot of meat, good eating. It's preserved, it's taken care of, but uh, all I do, I go and put in a little salt, you know, half a teaspoon. I don't measure it or anything. I just sprinkle some in there because usually when I'm eating, I'm adding salt anyway. I eat a lot of salt for some reason, but it ain't good for you, I guess, but I like salt and pepper and stuff on my stuff. So anyway, we just do this to each one of them. Sprinkle in a little bit of pepper. And I put a few other little seasonings here in it. Different stuff that you like. And uh, just any kind of steak seasoning, whatever you want or nothing. Huh? You can have it plain. You can do it however you want. And uh, then what you do, you put the jar lid on there. Well, the first thing you got to do there is take a damp cloth after you get everything in there. Make sure you don't have any seasoning, spices, anything around this lip, because that will impede it sealing up good. Okay? Then you screw the lid on. Get it on there as tight as you can. 
like I said, I got these rubber things. Everybody's got them in their kitchen. But you tighten that up as tight as you can get it. And the next process is put it in the canning pressure cooker and you cook it up. But I'll show you how to do that here in a minute. Okay, here we got it in the canner. We got uh, five pints in there. I got seven uh, half pints in there. Normally, if you're using quart jars, you can get seven in this one and uh, ten pints. And I'm not sure on the half pints. Uh, you yeah, know, we got seven and five pints there now. So, but after you do that, you bring the water up to about halfway on the jars inside your thing. Each pressure canner, this is a mirror one, but most of them are, have all the directions. Follow the directions on your pressure canner. These are very un uh, safe if you're not careful with them. They're a great product if you're if you do what you're supposed to with them. That's all. But once you get the lid on here, which they got to line up just perfect. Make sure they latch perfect. Then you have this pressure regulator on this one here. It's 5, 10, and 15 PSI. It's a mirror brand. Uh, I run this one on the 10 pound one. Uh, that's the recipe I use. 10 pound pressure right there. And you put this little hole on top of the lid over here. Right on here. Okay. Set it on there. You let it cook. I go an hour and a half. Uh, once it starts, uh, the pressure starts coming out of this thing here, it'll start jiggling around. Yeah, you turn your fire up on high. You turn it down on, uh, yeah, usually I can get about away with medium on this one. And let it, it'll go every couple minutes or so. It'll let off pressure steam here. And uh, cook it for the hour and a half, time it, and then when you do, you release your pressure off your, release it off slow, because of the fast release of the pressure will crack your jars. Uh, when you take them out of the canner, don't take them out and expose them to cold air, cold water, anything like that, or they will bust on you. Make sure you set them on a uh, dry, uh, like a dish towel or something, set them there, and just let them cool on their own until you hear the lids, they will pop and they'll get completely cold and then you can check them to see if this lid sealed and they you put them away it's real simple folks uh, it's just a lot of work but uh, follow your directions on your canners and all that type stuff and there's a lot of other videos on how to process deer and stuff this is just the way I do it so you guys uh, take what I'm saying just for what it is and you can do a lot of other things with any kind of meats and make a lot of different dishes and stuff that you love but besides just canning this is just what i was showing you how to how I do my canning so other than that thanks for subscribing comment share this video and we really appreciate all of you for watching my videos and hopefully we can continue on from here and, and get bigger and better